Yes, yes. Okay, so we will wait, we will wait for like next two minutes and then we will start this session. Sure, sure. And this is one of the integral part of the DevOps, uh, you know, so <clears throat> when it comes to devops then like we are writing the code for the infrastructure in different form by using the Jenkins, by using the terraform by using the uh, configuration manage management tools like <clears throat> like ansible and uh, keeping those codes safe and uh, keeping the version of the code is completely necessary so that is what we are going to learn today and that how we can go and keep the code uh, versions right and what all things we can go and use so before we go and get jump, uh, jump into this version control system let's uh let, let's try to read about like what it is so i hope that it takes in everything is clear to all of you Now it should be more and uh, yeah so version control is the system that records manage changes to documents computer program etc over time it keeps track changes when multiple people work on the same project so you know as written over here so yes it is absolutely true that you know when multiple people were are working in your team and so it completely it is you know it become completely mandatory that you go and save your code at some of the center location so that everybody can so that everybody can go and you know fetch the updated code from there right so it is a good way of collaboration when we use this version control system so what usually happens that we have a developer and uh, for developer it creates a software and start a company with uh, this software right so this is what you need to imagine now problem before the version control system was like as a company grow the developer hires more people to enhance the feature of the software and developer shares the source code copy with each one of them to work on now you might be thinking that why why can't we go and use a simple editor like notepad or the in linux we have this vim or nano why why we also need this you know uh version control system so let's say that you are working in a team and now you're working on a piece of code and suddenly like you know uh, there are like some bugs and some errors in in that piece of code now another another developer will be will be asking you that can you go and give me the piece of code on which you was working so what you will do in that case uh, you will just go and copy the whole thing uh, from your Linux operating system, maybe Windows, and then you will ask, and then you will ask them to, you know, paste all those files in their own system, right? And then finally, like that developer will go and update the things, and uh, and and then like they will give you uh, the updated code once again. So you will go and copy, or uh, you will go and copy and paste the whole stuff again. But there is one problem which i wanted to highlight over here that whenever you do copy and paste right so in that case the existing file will be get overrided by the previous files so after a couple of time you know you will not be able to find out that whether like what all kind of enhancement has been done to to solve the previous errors right and even if you updated your code and that code have a bug and now you wanted to roll back to the previous version the, so it is you know you will not be able to do so because all the files has been overridden, right now when you work in the complex and big environment so it is really hard to make a copy of each and everything 
every time you update something. Okay, so that's why we need this control version control system. So this is the whole story which is getting explained over here. And uh, yeah, so problems before version control. So version was manual, team collaboration was a time consuming and hectic task. And you can assume it uh, and uh, no easy access to previous version as I said, and multiple version took a lot of space. You know, that is also one thing. So I will be explaining you and showing you that what all things can be done by using this version control system. Now we have a couple of advantages of you know for this version control system. That is, versioning is automatic, so you don't have to go and worry about that. You know whether version has been created or not. Even if I talk about the SD storage, so there there also we can go and create the version of the file. But still, if you wanted to collaborate with multiple teams, so that is not feasible in case of S3. So again, we're left with a simple version control system. That is like GitHub or Bitbucket, GitLab. So depending upon the company's environment, you will find any one of them. So advantages, I was talking about the advantages. Team collaboration is simple, easy access to previous version, and only modified code is stored across the different versions. Hence, save storage. So now, you should know on a high level that you know we have two kind of versions version control system available the first one is central vcs the second one is distributed vcs in case of central vcs what used to happen like we will be having a remote repository and then each of the developer each one of you will be saving your code in the remote repository right you will not be having any kind of local uh, copy of the code everything which you have will be get saved on the remote repository fine so that is what we have this uh, that is what we have this called uh, central vcs okay i think like one more person has joined somebody uh it's me i have some okay. issues with my laptop joining okay cool Fine. So I was talking about central VCS version control system, and uh, you know the next one is distributed VCS. Now, in case of distributed VCS, these days whenever it comes to version control system, so we are using unknowingly distributed version control system. So what used to happen that you will be having a remote repository, maybe on GitHub, maybe on GitLab, maybe on Bitbucket, right? But you will be also having a local repository. So whenever you clone, whenever you download the repository from the remote repository, so you you make a local repository on your on your system. You basically you main you make a local copy of the of the data, right? So that is what we have. Now, if, now like if you if your team have three developers or maybe four uh, DevOps engineers, so in that case, you will be all of them will be having a local uh, repository. So even in case I deleted the remote repository, you know, so still you will be having a local copy of the data of the code. Understood? Yes. Okay. So this is again the same kind of explanation you know and as i said like in case of centralized version control system you will be committing that means committing words is uh the same word that we go in that we use every day or like save right so when we whenever i say committed that means i'm trying to save the content okay so if i talk about this centralized version control system that means I'm committing, I'm saving all the content on my remote repository. Okay, my laptop uh, is extremely slow. I, I have to go and format this laptop someday. I'm not getting time. Okay, in case of our distributed version control system, you know, 
uh, one does not necessarily uh, necessarily necessarily rely on the central server to store all the version of a project file right so the developer can clone the repository that means make a copy of the repository on his local system and can work on it the ultimate benefit which i have seen in my life is that like you know when i used to travel from one place to another place and i i don't have the internet access but still i have to go and work on the requirement i can simply download the repository and i can go and work on it and i can just go and test the whole thing on my local system and then you know if everything works fine on my on my local system i can go back where the internet is available you know and then i can push the code through to the remote repository in that way uh, the team will be able to deploy the changes easily even i am not available for a while right so that is a com that is a great benefit which we have in case of distributed version control system okay so this uh, you know this is one example of central version control system that is sub version it was quite popular like few year, few years back and uh, helix core yeah. even like some some of the companies are still using this sub version it is a apache you know license version available and distributed as open source under the apache license okay so you can see the disadvantage of sub version that is you need the internet access uh, for the operation right you cannot make a copy of the make a copy of the code and then save it and then update the code on your local system that is not possible in case of sub version so you always need the internet access to update the code to save the code to commit the code now we have this great example of distributed version control system that is force mercurial and Git. so i have seen that some of the organizations are using mercurial and Git. you know git is quite popular if you know git so i think you don't need to know anything else and the concept is almost same in every everywhere so Git, uh we have used the git base repository and amazon if i talk about the aws code commit yeah AWS code commit also uses the git based repository the git based concepts and uh, if i talk about the gitlab if i talk about the bitbucket so all of them are using this git based concepts right now introduction to git so you can see the uses of this git is quite high compared to others perforce and mercurial So again as i said in case of distributed you uh, you know make a copy of each and every code and on your local system and then update the things and then push those changes or commit those changes to the remote repository right and in this way you are able to track the changes that what changes you have done so far let's say that you're working on version one and now you updated the code so that will automatically automatically become the version two you know so this is the advantage of this gate you can track the changes very easily on your system okay so now we have like you know life cycle of the git so it is important to know and i will show you from the command line that how it is working so like we have this working directory okay where we go and work like you will go and save the whole code in a folder that is what we call working directory then you have this staging area where you are trying to update the code and everything right once you are done with all the changes and everything you will go and commit the things so before committing before committing the code you are always in this staging area and committing means saving right the stage where you save the code with some message So working directory the place where your project resides in your local disk okay and uh, and if you wanted to initialize the folder for your working directory then you have to say git it from the command line right so 
So one of the great thing which I really liked about the Visual Studio Code, that Visual Studio Code itself providing me a terminal, so I didn't, I don't need to open a terminal, you know, uh, if I need it. I can simply open a terminal from the Visual Studio Code and then go and run all the command if I need it. And whenever you say that git in it, in that case, it creates a dot git folder, right? A hidden folder which will be not visible, which will not visible to you. But yes, you can say ls hyphen la, and then you can see that yes, that folder got created. Staging area. Once we are in the local, or once we are in the working directory, we have to specify which files are to be tracked by git. Okay. We do not specify all the files to be tracked in git because some files could be temporary data. So if I talk about the temporary data, so you can think, uh, uh, you know, like whenever we execute some of the applications, let's let's talk about the Maven. So it downloads a lot of, uh, uh, it downloads basically a lot of data, right? A lot of repositories data or bundles. So we don't require them to push those things to our GitHub repository because unnecessarily it will increase the size. So that's why like we say that, okay, ignore it, right? And whenever we go and, you know, if I talk about Terraform, so Terraform, uh, so in order to execute the Terraform templates, what we do like uh, we say Terraform plan, and then we say Terraform build, right? Or Terraform apply. So what it does like it always download the plugins and save those plugins into a hidden folder called .terraform. I will show you in the future classes. So now you don't require to upload those plugins to the github repository because because it will increase the size of the repository and it is not required at all you know whenever you will be running terraform plan and terraform apply command so what will do like it will automatically download the plugins on the system where you are trying to execute your code so that's why like we try to ignore those things and that is not required okay so we we can go and say in git that okay this is not required by us we finally, finally, we have this comment. So once the files are selected and are ready in the staging area, then we can now be saved in the repository. So uh, whenever you wanted to save your code and everything, so in that case, you can always say git commit hyphen n in message. And uh, you need to give a message, right? I have seen some of the people in my team that what they do, like they say updated. Every time they give the same message, updated. And you might have seen if you're working on Git, then you will also observe that some of the people are giving very silly kind of messages whenever they wanted to save their code. But the problem begins whenever you wanted to tra track back that, you know, uh, uh, let's say that you wanted to move to the previous version and now you're not sure because every commit, every message, every, uh, every commit having a same message, you know, so it is, so to avoid these kind of hectic scenarios where you have to go and struggle, you know, you always need to give a meaningful message whenever you are trying to save the code. So this is just a pictorial view. Uh, so you have the program workspace, then you initialize the working directory, then you work on the files, you know, that calls like a staging area. And then like you save the code right and you push that code to the remote repository so this is a like a pictorial view of the life cycle so here in this uh, diagram we have this github this is a remote repository and one more thing we used to do like we integrate this github with our ti in cd like jenkins tool Right. So in that case, what will happen? Anytime, anytime any developer push the code to the GitHub repository, and that repository is been attached with the Jenkins, so a build will automatically start. A build will automatically start in case of this. Right. So that is what uh, we used to do sometimes. Okay, this thing I will explain from the GitHub itself. Uh, right, I will show on a diagram inside diagram. So 
So uh, I hope that all of you have the GitHub <coughs> GitHub account. Do you have the GitHub account with you, or uh, you need to create it? We need to create it. Yeah, I don't okay. have it. Uh, me either. Me either. Don't have. Okay, no issue. We will we will go and do it together. That's fine. So first of all, we will go and work on the local system. Then finally, we we will move to this. Okay, so as of now, you know, you don't need to install Git on your system. Uh, if you have already installed this Git bash, right? So Git bash basically comes with this Git by default. You don't need to install Git here. And what I'm going to do, let's say, you know, I am going to create a folder called For I glance, right? Let's say I created this folder and I created this folder in my desktop. So you can see the working directory is pwd, right? And uh, I can do ls hyphen l. Of course, these are not git commands. I just wanted to show you, you know, from where you can start. Okay. Now, if I will do, or let me say ls hyphen ld, that means I wanted to check the availability of the directory. And uh, you will see the whole permission on the directory, right? Okay, so now I wanted to initialize this folder, right? So first of all, I need to, I will be going to this folder and I will say like get in it, okay? Now hit enter. So git init is a command which is in its, which used to initialize the folder. Okay. So you can see like you now we have a hidden folder available in this in this uh directory. So if I say ls, I will not be able to find out anything. But if I say ls hyphen la, so you can see we have a dot git folder, right? We can also check like what is available in this dot git folder. So these are the things config description head hooks info objects and references okay so if you delete these things so probably you will be you know in trouble right because here like we here, whenever you make any comments and anything so here it is saving all the things Fine, so we have also initialized our folder. Now let's go back and okay. Now, if I try to show you, and this is you know, get a status command. So get a status command is a very meaningful command, and I use this command all the time whenever I need it. So, once the directory has been initialized, you can check the status of the files whether you are being dragged by Git or not using the whether you are being tracked, right? Whether you are being tracked by Git or not using the command get status. So yes, say let me increase the font. Yep. And I let me clear the screen. Okay. So get status. So it will show me one thing that I on master branch, on master branch no commits yet nothing to comment right on master branch so by default whenever you create any git directory or by, by default whenever you initialize any folder into git in that case it creates a master branch it creates a master branch right and it says that no commit yet that means like you haven't saved anything so far But it's uh, as of now it is showing you like you have untracked file like one dot txt two dot txt you can create any file. Let's say uh, I wanted to create you know such 
ec2 start dot py and uh, as of now i'm not going to save any content in this but yes surely we can do that stop dot py and now you can see like you know we have two folders and one thing about git bash you know i really like that it always show you the current master and branch in this bracket so you might be wondering that what it is it was not there earlier but now we have this master in this bracket so this is uh, the current branch which is showing to us so if i say git status you can see like we have no comments and we are on master branch and this is uh, really important to know that on which branch we are working now so i will be explaining about branch but as of now you know bear with me and it says that untracked files so we have two untracked files these two which we just created okay so now what we can do like we can say git add and you can say dot if you wanted to add each and everything available in the current directory if you wanted to add each and everything available in the current directory important it is right so uh, or you can also define the name of the file let's say that there are multiple files in your repository now you updated like you know couple of them but you wanted to but you are sure about only one file that you can update or upload or save one file in the uh, repository right so you can say like get uh, add and then name of the file. If I say it is status now, so you will see like you know we have new file available right here, and it says uh, we have untracked file ec2 underscore stop dot py. So if you wanted to add everything in the current directory, so you can say git add dot. Now I will add both of them. okay so now like you have added this thing you have added this thing and you can see like to change in this to the committed and uh, once you run this command so it will go to unstage area you know it will go to unstage area okay now i wanted to save all the changes git commit and then let's say ec2 start and it stop. And you need to uh, you need to give a beautiful message, a meaningful message in double quotes, right? Always do that. And hit enter. So now this thing has been saved on on the system in the gate, right? So if I say get status, now you will see that nothing to commit because the changes has been committed to our Git system. Okay. And uh, and you can also see here that we got this D50BD6F. What it is? It is a commit, uh, basically, you can say the version, basically, right? and if i wanted to check like how many comments we have so we can say git logs and you will find that you know we have okay sorry yeah so you can see uh, like uh, this is the commit you know commit number which we have so basically it defines that how many comments you have now this is really helpful you know you can also see a message that you have given for this commit easy to start or stop so same thing git add git commit and git remote yes now as of now what we have done so far like you know we created a folder we have initialized that folder into git now it is a time that we upload the code to the remote repository and remote repository can be your github can be your gitlab can be your bitbucket so these are the like popular Git based repositories available in aws some of the companies are using some of the companies are using do you know any one of them 
some of the companies are using i mentioned it earlier remember for coming but you don't need to worry about it because the commands and everything will be same in case uh, in all of them okay so code coming now 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 let's go and create a repository in github and uh, github.com and uh, if i think we have the option available sign in with google yeah i i think it is okay no worries you can always go and create an account it's like quite simple you have to go and give your username and uh, you know you need to give your email id you need to give your password and all and then finally you will be having an account which needs to be verified so i have an account available with me and i will say like okay i don't know whether i remember the password or not okay cool so i got a verification code so so yeah. now i have like one more organization available so i will go and use it for yeah so this is github.com right this is github.com whenever you will be logged in to your account so you'll find this thing and you need to create a repository first of all right so that you can go and push your local changes to the remote repository into the central system and uh, you can go and click on this new but i think whether you will be you may not be able to find out this option so we also have a plus sign option here on the right hand side and uh, you have this option called new repository right and you can choose the owner whether the owner is for a glance or like or this and you can give a repository name so let's say the name of the repository is demo uh, one and uh, and now you want this repository to be publicly available or private so if i say public that means everybody will be having access to this repository right everybody will be having access to this repository and if i say private now it is like github has have said like you know you can also go and create a private repository for free but earlier they used to charge some amount on a monthly basis so and one more thing if you are not aware github has been acquired by microsoft so now it is a microsoft product so when i came to know that it is a microsoft product and microsoft have acquired this thing so i shifted the whole code and each and everything to different uh, you know uh, different git based system working control system and now my codes and everything is available at different at different platforms but they are doing great they like they are giving a lot of functionalities for free and they you know now like we have the option for private repositories also so yeah i must say that microsoft is not you know distracting the open source community they are i think trying to contribute into the open source community so yeah without further talk so i create i clicked on this plus sign and i got the option to create the repository and now i can go and give a description let's say that you know demo or you can say like you know e-commerce website anything anything which or which it belongs to now probably you will not be getting these kind of options in the productions Right, because you will see that ton of repositories is already available and like we are 
updating the code and all but sometimes you may get the requirement so you should know that how it is working fine so i clicked on it and yep here we go so we have all these things okay now it doesn't seem so good what i will do like i will just go and click on this https click on this https you got a link right go and copy this link and uh, here we go and we should be having like complete option yeah so now you can see like you know create a new repository on the command line so it is like saying you that what all things you can go and do right so it is saying like okay echo and create a file readme.md that initialize a folder add that uh, the file which you have created so add that file and commit it and then like add a remote repository so get remote add origin and the url of the repository right so each repository have a unique url now i will just go and copy this command from here and the same command is getting repeated right here okay so let's go and paste this thing hit enter the remote repository has been added i can go and check it get a remote ls oops okay sorry this hyphen v yeah that is hyphen v so get remote hyphen v and you can see like origin and uh, you know so this is a remote repository now what i need to do i need to push the code to run uh to this rep remote repository so i can go and run the command right before i execute this command push right i need to make sure that i have i have some of the work which i have already saved which i already committed okay, so i will just go and run this command now it will be asking me for the username and password and the syntax is always going to be same get push hyphen new origin and this is the name of the branch we are working on master branch so this is the name of the branch see it is asking the username and as i said earlier that you know my laptop is very very slow this is i will be formatting it very soon but till the time till that time please bear with me i have given the username and password few days back i was getting a pro kind of message from github why i don't know like why it has been removed awesome so it is like pushing the code right and now you can see that enumerating objects three done counting objects three of three blah 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 and new branch is master master okay so this is how you go and you know work on your local system and save your changes to the remote repository if i try to refresh this page so you will see the whole thing right so let's go and refresh it awesome so we have the changes right we got our files on our on our remote repository Same thing they have done here. Okay, fine. Now you know uh, you can make a clone of this repository. So can you guys go and make a clone of this repository on your local system from where? So you need to go and click on this clone and download, right? I'm just trying to. Okay, we don't have the chat option, right? Okay, so uh, you know you just need to say github.com slash for a glance slash demo one dot git can you clone this repository in your local system guys
and the complete command that you have to execute is git clone right okay so here we only have the url fine so you need to run a command called git called git clone and the repository https colon slash less github.com slash four i ends this is the name of the organization probably in your company you will find a lot of organizations over there right different team may may have different organization name or not okay so you know, this is how you clone the repository okay clone means download the repository that's it have you cloned guys yes yeah awesome. i have a doubt yeah 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 after commit uh, can we change the uh, file or any modify on it definitely that's why that's why that's where it is creating you know a new version of the file so okay i will be using vim Vim and uh, AC2 start or PY. Right. Oh my God. Let's say import board or three and uh, you know. Okay, let's give a simple message. We are about to afraid of Okay, so now this is my change, right? I will be saving this change to the file and uh, okay. Now, if you say like get the status, so you'll find that you know you have one modified file available. Okay, and now you say here that get add dot, and you added the content, all the directories, uh, you know, all the file and folders available in this current directory, and uh, by adding dot here. Now you will say like git commit iPhone M updated easy to start. Okay. So you uh, you have saved your changes, and it is extremely important whenever you do uh, the work on your local system so that you know if anything goes bad uh so still you have a you know optimized version of the code so get and then uh, push origin hyphen u and master defining hyphen u is not important but it is something like up the stream and you wanted to push the changes to the master branch Okay, so if I go back and you know try to click on this file, so you will see the content, right? So you can see the content has been added. Now I wanted to show you one interesting thing uh, that will be the answer of your question is like get log, right? So you will see that the second changes which I made and committed it, so it, it created an it created a new version with another commit uh, number right so you can see like we got a long 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 
commit number right and it have also a message updated ec2 start okay so this is how it creates the version have you got the answer for your question yeah got it thank you okay awesome can we revert okay, back before. to previous comment? Sorry, can you can you? Okay, your question is: Can we go and revert back to the previous comment? Yes. Uh, how to revert back to previous comment? Yeah, it is absolutely possible. We can do that. Sometimes it can be a requirement that you wanted to revert back to the previous comment, and I will be explaining so uh, soon. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so what do we mean by this git pull? So git pull, like whatever the changes, uh, you know, somebody have made, let's say, as of now, you don't have the GitHub accounts, but, uh, uh, okay. But let me, let me do one thing, you know. Let me say uh, that, okay. So, let me go and, you know, uh, update the another file. So we have this demo repository, demo one repository. I will go to this file and uh, click on this edit. You can also use this web console to edit the files if required. And say like import. Mm, def and let's say ec2 stop and yep and uh, let's say like return stop ec2 Fine. So this is a kind of uh, a very bad, you know, program. But yeah, just think of it like you know, I have updated something. Now you can see like our uh, committed changes and all. And if you wanted to write your customized changes or customized commit message, so that is totally fine. And then you can say, you know, commit changes. And uh, yep, the commit has been changed. Okay. Fine. And uh, now, uh, you know, this commit is available on my remote repository. This GitHub is a remote repository. Now, I wanted to like fill the changes which is available in my remote repository. It sometimes it happens like you know, in the developer, uh, developer one, developer two, developer three. So developer B have had updated the code and he have pushed the changes to the to the remote branch, right? but that change is not available on your local system. If I go back and try to say that, okay, EC2 and stop .py, so you will not find anything. The reason, the reason is very simple, that there was a developer B who have updated the code on his local system and updated that code, you know, or push that updated code to the remote repository. Now what, how can you go and, you know, pull those changes? Do you need to clone the complete repository? The answer is no. You, you don't need to, you don't need to clone the complete repository. What do you need to do in that case? You just need to say get pull and you can define the name of the branch origin master. You wanted to pull the changes from the master branch. That's why we, we are saying origin master. And you can see, uh, you know, uh, it have added like five lines, five lines in this file, ec2 underscore stop dot py. So say ec2 stop dot py. And here we go, right? Here we have the content. 
isn't it cool it is absolutely right uh, a real thing which we are saying here so this is how this git pull work right if you wanted to make the if you wanted to pull the changes from all of the branches on your local system so we have a command called git pull hyphen hyphen all in that case it will go and pull the whole changes every changes each and every changes from all the branches and sometimes it is required whenever you know you're working on your system and you wanted to like pull the changes from different branches just to refer something so yeah it is required in that case yeah so finally we are on this uh, get branch what do we mean by this git branch i'm saying branch branch master branch master branch again and again and so what do we mean it by it until now we saw how we can work on git but now imagine multiple developers working on the same project or repository how to handle the workspace of multiple developers we use branch okay to create a branch from existing branch we type git branch and then the name of the new branch okay so i used to do like creating new branch as well like uh, if, if the repository is a new one very very new and we wanted to create a master branch which doesn't exist already so this command will work like get a branch uh, name of the new branch yeah definitely it will go and work so uh so first of all you need to be in master branch and as i said master branch is going to be available by default in your system uh, it is always but, available if if any case master branch is not available because like uh, i saw in big bucket uh, when we create a new repo in under some project so it will be very blank when we clone that one we need to create master branch by ourselves i do remember this yeah. one but uh, not sure how it gonna work okay let me check Uh, uh, I don't know. Like uh, by default, one master branch is always available. Uh, why it was not there in your case? Might be somebody have deleted it. Uh, no, no, no. Even like couple times I saw the same thing. So I'm not uh, like why. Once I use the commits, we uh, code whatever present in the that section. There used to be some commits like a git init and git add so and so three lines. So I used to perform in that uh, when I do the git bash, then it will start working. Then master branch will be created, but uh, comments, uh, comment, comments are already presented in bit bucket. So I wanted to know if uh, master is not available. So what is an how to be create how we can create a master branch for a repo? Okay, like uh, the name of the branch is like you know it is not that important. it can be master branch it can be any other branch and uh, the thing is like which branch you are considering as a stable branch right so uh, like some of the companies are saying that must we will be uh, considering this master branch as a main branch but in your organization it may happen that they are considering uh, another branch as a stable branch right as in my case also like we are not considering the master branch as a stable branch we push our stable codes to some other branches so uh you know uh, i think that's not a point of worrying because like you can always go and create a branch and then you can work on it okay so um, but in uh, coming to your query that you are say that the bit you know in case of bit bucket you don't have the master branch but it is available but it might happen that somebody have deleted it and somebody want you to create and somebody don't uh, haven't given you the access of the master branch because we can also give the permissions to our contribute as that they can contribute to which branch so that is also possible so now we are saying if a repository is created master branch will be create will be present by default correct okay okay but that's fine that's fine like you know in organization we uh, we do have a stable branch and it can be master it can be some other branch also right depending upon what they have chosen and like in companies we don't give the permissions to each and every branch uh, you know you will be having permissions to only see some of the branches sometime 
uh, you will be having permissions to update only your branch right so sometime you will be having the administrator access sometimes you will be having a read only access to the particular branch so that kind of things we can go and add in in github okay okay so coming back to uh, the previous thing so uh, you know if you have multiple developers and now you wanted to create a branch for a developer so that the developer can go and work his code or her code so uh how we can go and work around it so we have this get branch and let's say like you know you wanted to create a branch for shruti right go and hit enter and as of now we are in we was in master branch so all the things which was there in the master branch has been added to the shruti branch right i can say like get status and i can check all the update okay so the branch has been created fine but we haven't added anything so i will say like get checkout and uh, the name of the branch let's say again shruti and yeah so now you can see like you know we have this message switch to branch shruti and uh, now we have all these files and everything now i can say get a status And I will say get push origin and then the name of the branch. Okay, if I go back to my github.com and you know and try to refresh this page. And if I just go and click on this branch, so you can see like one more branch has been added, right? Now this is how we, you know, we give permissions in the company that we don't give the access to the master branch only to the few particular branch. And uh, and now you can go and work in your branch and update the code and everything. And somebody will be there in your company, like a manager, maybe your team lead. Somebody will be there. He will always validate your code and merge that piece of code to the master branch if needed or maybe any other branch okay so let's say you know i wanted to create a file called so i will be using this web console click on this create new file say s3.py and again like you know download the file from s3 bucket okay i wanted to save this piece of code create s3 py is the message click on this commit new file and now you can see like the you know other uh, changes are available in the truthy branch right if I go back to the master branch, so you will not see these changes. A master branch is a, is a default branch as of now. You will not see those these changes. Okay. We have only two files available in the master branch. Now this is the interesting stuff. So what uh, what the developer used to do, like you know, uh, this developer will go back to a branch and uh, say will say that I wanted to create a new Pull request and now you need to have a look carefully that what we are about to do we are about to merge the changes right so we are about to open a new pull request and we are saying that okay create a pull request and merge the changes from this branch compare this branch to master right you can see this arrow it is directing towards the master branch you can leave a message here or something and you can say like create pull request right create pull request now your team lead will uh, you know uh, will be having access to merge the code as of now like you know i do have the access i got this message 
and if I just go back and click on this code, so you will see everything as it is. There are no changes, right? Master branches still have two files right here, and but one thing has been added called pull request because the developer have created a pull request. You know, she wanted to update the code to the master branch, so the leader, the team lead will will get the request from the developer called pull request. It will simply go and click on the console and will validate this information. You know, I can go and validate this information from here. I can also go and check that what is happening. So if there will be any conflict in something, so I will get the message, right? And there is a conflict. So I have the option like create a merge commit, squash and merge, rebase and merge. So click on this merge pull request. So you can see we got the message pull request successfully merged and closed, right? And you are all set, the security branch can be safely deleted. So if you wanted to delete this developer branch, Shruti, so you can go and delete it, right? And this is a usual practice. So I can go back and click on my code. And you can see like the S3.py has been added, right? And it can be a new feature in your in your repository, in your project. And one thing, one interesting thing I wanted to show you that if you go and click on this settings of the repository settings of the repository, then you need to go and click on this, uh, where it is, okay, it should be available in insights. Uh, yes, now uh, under the insights option, go and click on this network, and under this network option, you will see that what all things have happened, right? So. So you can see like, you know, here we have a commit, one second commit and third commit finally in the master branch and it is going on. Now what is happening like from the third commit, a branch has created called Shruti and you know, she updated something and we have a commit here for create S3.py and finally this changes, these changes has been added or merged into the master branch. So this arrow indicate that the changes has been merged to master branch fine cool right so this is how you know it is a pictorial view you can always go to github or your branch and you know in order to understand that what is happening you can always have a look to this insights network got it yes yes correct yeah got it okay awesome fine so now i can go in as i said like you know we have a command called get pull hyphen hyphen all and i can pull all the changes to all of the branches and uh, fetching origin and uh, you can see here that you know the changes has been pulled from master the changes has been pulled from Shruti branch, right? And if you wanted to delete the uh, branch Shruti, so you can go and say get branch hyphen D and then the name of the branch. And after merge, it is a practice of some of the organizations that they use to delete the branch, right? Of the developer. And developer go and, you know, and developer go and, you know, again, it is in her new branch and then work on the new code. Okay, so it is saying that cannot delete branch because as of now I am under the Shruti branch, so I need to check out. In order to change the branch from one to another, you need to say git check out, git check out, and then the another branch. And if you wanted to verify that how many branches you have, so you can always say git branch hyphen a. You know, it will go and list all the branches. So you can see like you know it have like four branches two is the local branch and two are the 
remote branches fine and it is saying a star here that means it is your uh, current branch so you need to change it it check out and then master right and now say get branch hyphen a and you can see like the current branch is master and you can also verify from verify from here okay now you can go and delete it so get branch hyphen d and it has been deleted okay from your local system only see uh, it has been deleted now <sighs> okay so what else we have yep so uh, get checkout explain if you wanted to switch from one branch to another so get checkout is a good command to do get logs if you wanted to verify all the versions and committed messages so yeah get log is the command get a stash yes sometimes sometime i use it uh you know you are working on your piece of code and now suddenly your lead came and he says you know there is like some issue with the code and immediately go to that branch and you know make some changes and make those changes now because you're working on your branch so it uh, like you know you might have changed some of the files what i mean to say here uh let's let's see so get check out and srr so as of now the branch is not available so srr branch is not available it will go and create the branch automatically okay it is not doing that fine so let me go and add like hyphen b yep so it has created the new branch srr okay now everything is available in this branch now you're working in this piece of code right so let's say okay uh let's say that i will i will just go and open the file ec2 start dot py Lambda is a whole new world. Uses Docker a container in the background. Save it. Yep, save it. Okay. You have saved your changes right in the file. And if you say get a status, so you will find out that the file has been modified. The file has been modified. Now, uh, uh, you know how many branches are available? So we have like two branches available: get branch hyphen a, and we have two branches available: star and master, right? And uh, now I'm not going to save or commit these things. Okay, I'm. Um, as of now my lead suddenly came and he want me to work on the master branch because something went wrong in the production so i have to stop my work immediately i need to go to the master branch and update the code and push those changes so i try to do like get checkout master so okay so it is saying the branch is behind okay it has been changed it has changed it shouldn't like uh okay uh basically like you know i didn't get the ss uh, message any error message maybe because i'm using this kid bash and it has already stashed the thing yeah. sorry uh, what you are saying can you repeat once again uh can you go to git status maybe yeah right okay so changes are not just uh, uh space for commit okay and that is this this however like when we work on id most of the time and whenever you will be trying to switch uh from the uh, from one branch to another branch so 
and you're working on your current branch and you made some of the changes in your file so you know you will not be able to switch it will abort the process right so in that case what you need to do you need to you need to stash uh, that means you need to save your work where you are as of now and then you will move to the master branch or any other branch do the work what your team lead said you know and you will like once you are done the work in some other branch then you will come back to this task so how you can do that so get a status as of now yeah get a status and then it will say get a stash hyphen you and uh, any message I when you and uh, yes it should create a stash fine so you can see that we got a message saved working directory and index state vip on srr this okay so this is something which we do and if you say get a stash hyphen hyphen list i guess Okay, it should be yeah. Okay, so you can see like we have a stash called uh, you know this one the stash at the rate zero. Now you can go back to your master branch. So get check out master branch and uh, your branch is behind. Okay, two comments, that's fine. Hmm. Okay. Now you will go and work something here. Let's say that. And I wanted to say like get full origin master because the remote changes are not here as of now. So I just created all file and, and everything. Open this s3.py and uh, yep, added the dot here, save it. Okay, I hope that I'm not giving the overdoses to you guys, right? This is how like it works. You should be having an idea that what is happening around, and once you will start working on it and try to do the practice, so you will be having the more clarity. Okay. So get status, one file has been modified, get add dot. So trying to add that file, which I you know changed to get commit hyphen M and then updated S3.py. Now I will say like get push origin master. So I'm pushing the changes to the remote branch as of now. Okay, so the team lead work has been done. Now I will go back to my branch, get check out. So I just made a scenario and I'm trying to simulate the, that scenario that you know why why we switch the branch now why we are back and now how we can go and you know start working on the previous on my uh, on my like on my work so okay so now I need to check the get stash once again and I wanted to like work on this stash to work right so you need to say get pop uh, get a stash pop right say we got our file and everything now we can go and work on it okay so now we can update the file and push these changes get add dot get you know commit i'm updated
is it underscore star dot py and get push origin the name of the branch is srar hit enter hey so you have created a remote you know a remote branch as of now so go back to github and you will see that our new branch has been added right here right so this is how uh, you know you work around with your code and everything in your github and yeah so let's see the, some of the other thing so as it is asked by you shruti that how we can go and revert back to the previous commit right so this is what we use git revert command and let me go back to my master branch which has most of the commits available so get like out so i'm trying to switch to the master branch and uh, let me clear the screen and i want to do you know uh, check uh, the number of commits available in the master branch so these are the number of commits we have a good number of commits available okay and this is the latest one now let's say that i wanted to you know move to the previous commit right i wanted to move to the previous commit copy this thing so get revert and the previous commit number you can also give only six digit uh, the whole number is not required you can give like six okay that will work so it is saying that you know it is saying that revert failed because it is a merge but no hyphen m option was given so what i will do like i will just go and uh, create a new file eco test unders read me dot md yeah i will say like get status so read me file is available get all dot new again get a status new file has been added get push origin master Sorry, I haven't given the comment. Okay. Added readme.md file. Yeah, now I can go and say git push origin master. And this file will be available in my GitHub. And this is one of the important file which i wanted to highlight because like if you have a project and something so you should be having a readable instruction that you know what is uh, what all about this project is so now if you go back to github.com and go to this master branch once again so readme.md is available right and you can also see the content is readable so you know, it is, it is important to create readme.md so that you can describe your project. Okay. Now I want to go back to the previous comment once again. So I will check the log, get log. And I want to like go back to my previous comment, this one. And press Q, get revert. And then this is the one. So you can see like it is saying us revert updated s3 and this is please enter the commit message for your changes and blah 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 hit enter
Okay. Now you can say, okay, status right here. Get add dot get push hyphen m reverted. Okay, so let's go and verify. Okay, something, 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 something. One minute ago. So what was that in this? So this file came like one minute ago, right? So this is what we changed to and uh, yeah, so now I don't remember like what change was there earlier, but that's fine. Like we uh, reverted the change, right? Okay, so this is about the git revert and Yeah, so this command is important. And as I said, like, you know, I was not aware that what was the changes between those two commits. So you, know, you can always check the differences between the commits, right? So that is sometimes very helpful. So you can check the changes between a commit. Git log and here, as of now, your head is available right here. And you can say, I wanted to check the difference between these two things, so I can say, okay, let me go and copy this thing. Okay, how do I copy? Okay, let's open the notepad. Yeah, another one is this. Yeah, so I'm trying to uh, compare or uh, basically find out the difference between these two commits. Hit enter. And you will see uh, the. Okay, so it says like div. Okay. And so that uh, the difference between these two files is like, you know, this uh, readme.nd and there was no content test uh, before so this is the major difference between these two commits and this could be more visible if i open my visual studio code oh i think finally it is going to open Cool guys, uh, I think you guys are very, very lucky. So it got open. Desktop, okay, desktop, desktop, desktop. And for items, right? Visible to all of you, right? Yes. Cool. So I'm just trying to click on this new terminal and uh, I can open my file if needed. Fine. And here I will say, okay, this is like PowerShell. Oh my Let's try. Right. 
power cell extinction loading. Okay, no issue. We will come back to this point, no problem at all. And so you know that how we can go and compare two, you know, uh, two files or two commits, right? So this is how by using git diff we can compare two commits. Okay. Now, like in this example, it is clear. One question. So right now we are seeing the differences in uh, git bash, right? So can we also see the differences in uh, uh, git console, like in UI? Uh, in UI, yes, you can see that. Hmm. So yeah, and 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 we have all the comments right here. See, so I reverted this one, so you can see right here that what is happening, and you can also. And uh, yeah, so this was a difference, you know. If you see that uh, you have, so this was not available. So that is like minus sign. That was that means like it is not available. And the plus sign that means it is available. Right? So that is available in green. So this is how you check the difference. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Okay, so the PowerShell open. I don't know like how much it will work. I don't work on PowerShell. So get uh you know diff and let's let's say that you are trying to make some changes here. Print added console function. Something like that. Now you can always check the you know our difference in the commit. So this will also work, and it says that you know it is available in your file, and this is what you have added, right? So this is how you can also go and check in your current file, and uh, in your uh, Visual Studio Code, always this line comes up, which says that this is something which haven't committed so far, right? And uh, you can check all the branches and everything here. So one pending changes so this is you know always available okay so if you wanted to comment so you can just go and comment from here itself so it's a very nice tool i think you should use it if you haven't and uh, it's free so that is that is the best thing in this example also you can see that the red line is was not available and it was added uh, you know in the second comment so that was a that was a difference between these two files Merging branches, we already done this merging branches that how we can go and merge the branches from the GUI. If you want to merge the branches from the CLI, so we do have the command uh, for that. And uh, so what do you need to do? You need to uh, first of all switch to the branch where you want to where you wanted to merge all the code, right? So let's say that I wanted to switch to the branch SRAR. So in that case, I will go to SRAR. I will do the checkout to the SRAR branch and then I will uh, run the command get merge and the source branch. Let's say that I want to do, uh, merge the changes from the you know, master branch. So I will let me show you. Uh, as of now, how many branches are there? So we got two branches and three remote branches. Get and uh, check out to SRAR branch, right? And uh, yeah, so we started to get the error, right? Please commit your changes or a stash before you switch branch about it. So this is the message which we usually receive and probably you are, we are getting this message because you know we started to use this usually studio code. So I will say like get R dot and get Commit hyphen M added new line. Okay, so we committed our changes into the master branch. Now I will go back and um, 
click out to my branch that is start and uh, you can see the files and everything right here and if you go to the visual studio code probably it should like change you can see like you know in the command line you have changed the uh, branch and now in the visual studio code also the branch has been changed right so that's the power of this command line or the visual studio code okay now you are in the star branch and you wanted to get the file from the master branch so you will say git merge and your uh, source branch that is master because you wanted to take the changes or merge the changes from the master branch you need to make sure that there is no conflict if there is then you need to solve those merge conflicts manually and we got the merge conflict awesome fine and what is that so it is saying automatic merge field fix concrete and then commit the result so it is saying like we have some problem with this ec2 underscore star dot py right and now you need to make sure either you go and you know update this file or you go and update the you know, update this file in the star branch or you go and update the file in the master branch so you need to take that decision you need to take that call that which changes you wanted to keep right so i am sure about that you know i wanted to take the changes from the master branch so i will just go and uh, and here we can see right in the visual studio code we can see that which changes we wanted to keep so current change is this Oh, except changes. So, okay. So I will say that, okay, like compare changes. Yeah, so compare changes and uh, this is my master change, master branch change, and this is my star branch change, right? Now, because we have some extra, so you know, this is the conflict. Uh, this is the conflict issue, uh, which is showing here in the highlighted red. So this one, this portion. So that is what we need to remove if we wanted to keep it. So what we can say, okay, like go and you know, remove it. Cannot add it in editor, okay. Cannot add it in read only editor. Sure. Fine, uh, then I will go and click on this and here we have whole thing and uh, yeah. So I will go and say that yeah, remove, this is my master branch changes. So I will say that, okay, go and remove this thing. Accept incoming change, I think this is fine accept incoming change so i accepted it yeah accepted the changes and now go to the git bash once again and uh, run the merge command so fix uh, merging is not possible because you have unmerged file and uh, okay existing because an unresolved conflict now we have resolved the conflict right now we need to save it did we uh, let me check the status okay it is unmodified 
we get add dot we get commit iphone app okay resolve conflict okay fine and now i will go back and say merge cool so we merge all the changes right i know it was quite uh, you know a lot of content to be given but yes this is how it works and uh, now the final thing is rebase. So you can see like, you know, this is exactly what we have done so far. And uh, Okay, so the history of the branch of, the history of the branch will look something like this if you are using git merge. So let me run this command git merge and let's see like, you know, what all things. So no remote for the current branch. Okay, so yeah, we don't have any remote for the current branch, so that's why you know it is not running. But yes, it will go. It is available, but it is not working. That's fine. Now we have this git rebase. It is an alternate to git merge. Should be used on local branches since history does not does change and will be confusing for other team members does not create any new commits and results in a clear, cleaner history the history is based on common commits of two branches the destination branch commit is pulled from its base and rebased onto the latest branch on the source branch right so imagine you are on the master branch and test branch and the developer has finished his and her work in the test branch, but the master branch move forward and uh, while the code is being developed, the code uh, being developed is related to the new commit added in the branch. Okay. Therefore, you want all the changes from the master branch in future. So what you will do in, since it is a local branch, you can add a cleaner in or liner history and you can decide it to rebase okay so what happens like you know you have taken a branch and you are working on this branch right as of now now till that time you have updated and added some commits to your branch and wanted to you know wanted to add this feature to the master branch again so what will happen like till the time you updated the code and everything in the feature branch so the master branch have gone some commit ahead, right? So now you wanted to rebase the thing from from the master branch. So that that is what we call git rebase. So this is the example: git checkout test and git rebase master. And uh, reminding rewinding help to replay your work on top of it. So that is what we. So that's all about this git and all right so we already solved the git merge and everything and uh, now you can ask me uh, some of the questions i know that you might be having some of the questions from this topic it was you know so many things we learned today and up to the advanced things so if you guys have any questions to ask and you want to have some clarity on some of the things which missed you can ask me So git push, uh, git push will work in the same way as a git push uh, or you get origin master. Are they same or is there any difference? I recommend that you know you always define the name of the branch that where you wanted to push. So essentially it is the same because like whenever you say git push, in that case you know you are in some branch, right? Your current branch is something. It can be star, it can be master, it can be you know, uh, let's say the feature one or feature two, some something, right? You are uh, you are always working on a branch. So whenever you say get push, in that case, you are pushing the changes to the same branch where you are working. But it is always good to define the branch name whenever you are trying to run this these codes okay, by using so the get push origin. Yeah. yeah. So best practice, we can use the origin and master. Yeah. 
name of the branch basically not mass oh. name of the branch yeah name of the branch okay yeah got it okay yeah anything else guys anything else which you wanted to ask i right know i'm i'm okay I'm good. I have no idea. Okay, so create your account in GitHub or Bitbucket or GitLab. You know these commands will work safe as it is in every in every Git based repositories, including uh, AWS Code Commit. And try to practice this stuff. This is really important. You know you will be using it a lot as a DevOps engineer. And if you will be working with developers, so you will be creating a lot of branches for them. Uh, you know because they don't have the permissions to create these things fortunately we do have uh, we used to be admin as a devops engineer everywhere with all the permissions okay yeah yeah okay guys then thank you so much for joining i have a session ahead so we'll see you tomorrow right and uh, tomorrow we will try to cover some other topics from devops okay yeah, sure and uh, one more question so is it possible for you to take session at 7:30 am ist or uh, you will be available at 5 am ist uh, i will be available at 5 as of now uh, yeah 7:30 i think i will not be able to make it out on a special uh, you know on a special recommendation from venkat you know i just it took some of the time and i know that it will be a bit hectic for me but yeah uh, you know <laughs> just wanted to uh, you know share something something very important to you all of you guys yeah okay yeah okay and okay, guys, uh, i think uh, yeah. we have one concept uh, that remaining in vpc like vpc endpoint so we can cover later yeah yeah, definitely. We will see endpoint. Yes, we will do that. Remind me tomorrow if I, if I you know, if I call you. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Have a Thank good you day, so guys. much. Huh? You too.